When you're using core data, you're gonna have many model objects that tend to be related to each other in some way. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to model relationships between managed objects in Core Data. In my last video, we set up the budget objects for this budgeting app. So I can create different budget objects that have a title and an amount, and they're represented by this entity in Core Data. Uh, and when we select a budget, we go to a new page where we get some details about the budget, but we can also create an expense. So for my food budget, I could create like, I don't know, a milk expense that's maybe $3 and then save that. And then from here, it needs to create an expense object that's related to a budget so that we know that milk is part of the food budget and not part of the uh, transit budget or a different budget. So we're gonna have multiple managed objects here that are related to each other. So I'm gonna start by creating the new expense entity. And that's the thing that's gonna get created every time I hit this save button. So I'll just add a new entity and I'll call this expense. And this is gonna have similar attributes to the budget. So I'm gonna have a name for the expense. That's gonna be a string and that's gonna be non-optional. We're gonna have uh, an amount, which is gonna be a decimal. Remember that's an NS decimal number. And this is also not gonna be optional and we can default to zero. And then we're gonna have a timestamp. So this is gonna be the exact time and date that the expense was created. And then we can use that later on to order them. So we'll have the newest expenses on top and the oldest ones on the bottom. Uh, so this is just gonna be a date type. Uh, and again, I'm gonna make that non-optional and I'm not gonna put a default or minimum maximum date here. I'm just gonna leave everything unchecked there. So now in my expense view controller, that's this view controller right here, when the save button is tapped, so when I tap that button there, we're gonna grab the information from these text fields and we're gonna get the budget that was passed to this view controller. So in this case, it's the transit budget, in this case, the food budget. So given the current budget, the, uh, let's see, the expense uh, name and the amount, we wanna create a new expense object and then save that to core data. The expense object has an amount, a name, and a timestamp but it also has a budget. So an expense is related to a single budget. Uh, a budget can have many expenses. So my food budget could have uh, you know, unlimited number of expenses, unlimited number of items that I buy using that budget, uh, but an expense will only ever exist on a single budget. So we have a relationship here where a budget can have many expenses and an expense only has a single budget. And we can think about this in pretty much the same way that we would think about cardinality in a relational database. Think about if it's a one-to-many or a many-to-many -many relationship. We don't need to create any tables here or think about the database in a concrete way, but we can think about the relationships in the same way. And then when we wanna create these relationships, we can just come to the relationship section here, click the plus button, and this will create a new relationship. So from the expense, I want to have a budget property, and this is gonna be a budget object. So my expense will have a property called budget that is just a single budget object. And then from the budget side of things, so we create the relationship uh, on both objects, we create it in both directions. Uh, I am gonna create a new relationship, I'm gonna call this expenses, because it's gonna be multiple expenses. Uh, this is gonna be expense object. And then we can actually tell Core Data what the inverse of this relationship is. So the expenses property on the budget is the inverse of the budget property on the expense. And this can come in really handy later. Because then if we assign a budget to the expenses budget property, the budget will automatically know about the expense. So that relationship always makes sure that both objects know about each other. And then if we select the relationship and go over to the attributes inspector here, for the expense, the name is gonna be budget. I don't want this to be optional. Uh, the destination is gonna be budget and it's just gonna be one, right? The expense is just gonna have a single budget. But if we go over to the budget now and click on this field, on this side, it could be optional. Maybe there are no expenses for the budget, um, but then this relationship is too many. So my budget is gonna have many expenses. And from the expense, this is just gonna be a single budget property, but from the budget, this is actually gonna be an NS set of expenses. And that's just a container that can contain many objects, kind of like an array. And if we come down here to the bottom right, I can change the editor style. And this is cool because we get to see a diagram of the different entities and how they're related to each other. So here's the arrow representing that relationship and then here's all the attributes. 
So this is just a nice visual representation of the entities. And now that I have this set up with the relationship and everything, I'm gonna go back to the expenses view controller and I wanna create that new expense, but I'm using that data manager object uh, to create the objects, just like I did with the budget here. So I'm gonna do the same for the expense. I'm gonna create a new method. Uh, I'm gonna call it expense. And then I'm gonna accept the uh, attributes that I wanna to assign to that expense and then return that expense from here. So I'm just gonna let this object manage the creation of the expense object. So Xcode's giving me those errors again, which I'm gonna ignore because I know that it actually builds successfully. Uh, so I'm creating a new expense object using the view context again, uh, setting its name and amount just like I did with the budget. Uh, but then I'm actually setting the expenses budget to be whatever budget I pass in here. So that's gonna be the current budget if I'm creating a food expense, that's gonna be the food budget. Uh, and then I'm setting the timestamp to be the current date and time just using the date constructor here. And then I'm returning the expense from here. And the really cool thing is that as soon as this line happens, as soon as the expense gets the budget, the budget also knows about the expense. So that inverse relationship is really cool here. Uh, so from my expense view controller, I can now create a new expense. So I'm just creating the expense using that data, using the name, the amount, and the budget object. Uh, then I'm appending it to this array of expenses, which is just an empty array right now. Uh, then I'm going to reload the table view that's going to use the data in this array to actually present each expense. And then I'm saving that expense to core data. So similar to what I did before, but now I'm actually attaching the budget to the expense. I'm enforcing that relationship between an expense and a budget object. So now I'm just going to present it in the table view. So now if I run this application, I should be able to create a brand new expense. Uh, so let's say milk and three, and it should appear in this table view as soon as I save it, and it should save its core data. So let's see, if I save this, it appears in the table view, and if I get rid of this view controller and present it again, nothing appears yet, because we're not querying for the expense objects, but it should have been saved to core data. So what I can do, instead of uh, creating a fetch request like I did last time, the budget here, the, uh, the budget object that's passed in, has a relationship to all the expenses associated with it. Uh, it contains those expenses as an NS set. So the budget is getting passed to this view controller from the other view controller when it's presented. So when I tap on the cell, the budget gets passed over to this view controller. And then in the view did load, I'm actually using the data from the budget to present these little bits of information in the labels here. So all I have to do is uh, grab the budget's expenses right there, and we can see this is a type of NS set. So we don't want it to be a type of NS set, we actually want it to be a swift array of expenses. But I can use the property all objects on this set to get all of the objects as an array. Then I'm gonna try and cast this as an array of expenses. Uh, and maybe I'll just put this in an if let uh, uh, all expenses then we'll set the expenses to be all expenses. Uh, so there's no fetch request going on explicitly. Uh, we're not having to say, you know, get all of the expenses that are to do with this budget. We can just say, uh, just grab the expenses property from the budget because that relationship exists. And this is kind of a cool thing to be able to do here. So if we run the application now, as soon as this view loads, it should just get all of the expenses. So if I tap food, uh, there's milk. And if I uh, put in another one, I don't know, maybe I get cereal to go with my milk, uh, maybe that's like $5, save that, uh, get rid of that view controller, and the next time it loads, it has all of those populated immediately, just using that property. And this isn't necessarily the best way of doing things, uh, because we have very little control over how they're ordered, and which objects actually come back, and how many, right, like if we had a thousand expenses, and we're only presenting, like what? eight here, we don't want to get all of them. Uh, but for now, for the time being, this can just be a convenient way of getting it. And I'll show how to do this in a better way in another video when we talk about fetch requests. With this functionality working, I want to talk about the relationships again a little bit. Because when we create these relationships, there is something important that we have to think about, and that's the delete rule. So if I have a budget, and the budget contains expenses, so in this case, my food budget contains two expenses, if I delete that budget, 
what should happen to those expenses? And if I delete the expenses, what should happen to the budget? So if I delete an expense, if I wanted to delete serial, I think the budget should just not really care, nothing should happen. But if I delete the budget, what happens to the expenses? Do I delete them? Do I assign them to a new budget? What goes on there? So this is something important you have to think about when you're thinking about relationships. And the most destructive thing to do would just be to delete everything. If I delete the food budget, all of the expenses get deleted with it. This might not be the best option. You might want to have some sort of uh, different thing. Maybe you have like a, a budget that's just a, a miscellaneous budget that you assign them to or something. Um, the least destructive thing on the other side of that would be, uh, so if we look here, um, the delete rule, I could say cascade, right? That's the, uh, if a budget gets deleted, delete all of its expenses. The other side of that is deny. So if I try and delete a budget object that has expenses, uh, it just won't work. Uh, core data will say that cannot be done, not gonna let it happen. And then the default option is nullify. So if, uh, if I delete the budget, the expenses point to null instead of a budget, and that doesn't really work for this application because I'm saying an expense can't have an optional budget, it has to have a budget. So I'm gonna do the destructive thing, I'm just gonna delete everything. If you delete a budget, you delete all of the expenses. I think this isn't the best option in production applications. I think there should be a, a more intentional thing that happens. I don't think the user should just lose all their data. Um, but in my application, in this application, I want that to happen. So I'm gonna set cascade to be the delete rule there. And that's where I'm gonna leave it for this video. We've gone over how to create multiple managed objects in core data and create relationships between those objects. This app now has a budget that relates to multiple expenses and an expense that relates to a single budget. In my next video, I'm gonna explain how to use NSFetch requests in more detail. So check out that video. Thank you.